Live from their home studios, please welcome the hosts of Dev Central Connects, Sander Vinberg and Boo Lamb. Well, hello, community. Thank you for joining us today on Dev Central Connects. Um, I'm your host today, Boo Lamb, and today as a co-host, we were supposed to have uh, John uh, Wagnon on. Uh, he's had to step out. Uh, today, we've got on Sander Vinberg, and I'll bring him on in a second here. Uh, but really excited to talk about this subject uh, with you guys today. We're talking about malware on Macs, and it's something that has been interesting for me to kind of follow over the years because at least when I started using Macs inside of the enterprise, it wasn't as much of a thing, and it was a low percentage of Mac users that were out there. Um, now we're seeing a, a lot more Macs out there. I would say in our organization, um, you know, close to 50%, uh, at least that I notice, are, are on Macs at this point. And so uh, along with that comes the malware, and it becomes a bigger target. And I think it's uh, some interesting data that we can kind of analyze uh, around that today. So really looking forward to that. Um, before we get into things, I just wanted to talk about, usually we talk about this later on in the show, but I just wanted to bring up some of the things that are happening right now um, with, uh, with Dev Central Connects and with F5. Uh, we've got some really interesting shows that are coming up. Yesterday, we actually had a pre-show call uh, with an upcoming guest for next week, Laura Lonzo, and she has been, uh, or she's going to be sharing her automation journey with us. We've previously had on John Capabianco, and he talked about um, automation, but he's actually published a book on automation. Laura Lonzo consumed that book in three days and then went on to do a whole bunch of automation in her network. So I think it's a really cool story to be able to share. Uh, we've also got on, actually, let me let me uh, pull up some of the headlines here. Next week, we will have on um, Jim McCarron, along with Jason, he's gonna be talking about the R-Series hardware. This is a hardware refresh for F5, and it's a big deal because there's a lot of changes in the architecture uh, that are upcoming that are going to allow for some really cool things to happen on the hardware platform. So you'll want to check this out. Um, Jason will be on with, uh, uh, with Jim to do that. Uh, the uh, real automation stories we're going to have on top five. And then another interesting one, Wagnonicon. I'll leave it at that. You, you can kind of guess what, we, what we'll be talking about there, but should be, uh, should be a good show. Um, okay, so besides that, there's also F5 Agility. So if you head over to f5.com slash agility, that was running through the timer, uh, countdown timer there, but we have that coming up uh, February 15th and 16th for North America, and then February 16th and 17th uh, over in the uh, European uh, EMEA and APCJ in Asia time zones. And so uh, you'll want to check that out. We've always got a lot of info on there. Dev Central is going to be there right with you. We're going to be doing some various live streams to kind of supplement some of the keynotes. So I'm really excited to be uh, doing that with y'all. So having said all that, let's go ahead and bring on my co-host today, Sander Vinberg. Sander, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on, Boo. Yeah, or actually, I guess, to have you on. I'm, I guess I should say I'm honored to co-host. This is sort of a new yes. experience for me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, today you are honorary co-host. I'm really excited to uh, to have you on. Uh, see, you've got some skis in the back uh, out there, so you've been out a little bit uh, in the snow. Yeah, a little bit. Um, we actually uh, the, the right around the holidays, uh, Washington just got sort of dumped with snow, and it was it was at it, at, at my house, which is only at 300 feet elevation. We had like 20 inches of snow accumulated for a while. Uh, so we had plenty to plenty of snow to go around and and it had actually been a few years between the pandemic and some work stuff. So um, so I got out for the first time and it was so nice. It was really, really great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've uh, I've been out. If folks want to check out my Twitter, it's just uh, my my at is Boo Lamb uh, on there. But I posted I've got a 360 camera and I posted a, a clip off of my 360 camera. It's pretty cool to kind of see that perspective. Mm -hmm. um that uh, a lot of people have asked me if it was uh, i clarified that because a lot of people asked me if i had like a drone flying in front of me uh which was not the case i probably would have ran into it or something but uh <laughs> but yeah it's just me holding a 360 camera uh, in front of me so that's worth checking out um before i bring on our esteemed guest today i just want to highlight a couple comments uh daniel wolf hello to you daniel is actually our featured um featured uh, dev central member 
uh, for this month. And De uh, Daniel was also recognized as one of our Dev Central MVPs as well. So um, thank you so much for your contributions. A number of MVPs were recently announced for Dev Central for 2022. Thank you all for your contributions. Um, this is what makes our community special is community members who are contributing their expertise back into the community. So super cool to have those folks uh, be honored. Um, all right, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring on our special guest today in just a second. All right, today we've got on Peter Schiffler, AKA the Cypher King. How are you doing, Peter? Uh, doing well. <clears throat> Thanks very much. And uh, I, I too am excited to be on. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's cool to be on Dev Central Connects with you um, and not uh, uh, the Boo and Daryl show. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a change. So yeah, it's uh, it's the it's the big show now. I'm gonna for <laughs> folks who don't understand the reference, here is a shot of Peter <laughs> as the Cipher King. This was uh, uh, my, yes. This was the my early expert. pandemic days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was my expert Photoshop skills uh, really came into play here. Um, looking at this now, I don't know if folks can tell, but um, this is not actually Peter's body uh, or him <laughs> at a tiger. That was that was totally photoshopped and fake. Well, it might have been my body, but it was my arm. I, I have an eye watch. <laughs> that's that's I, right. I, I, I don't have that's a an amazing watch shirt. Like that. That's the a, glittery blouse is yours though right that's, oh yeah I've got, I've got a whole closet of those so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a shirt what a shirt okay yeah. cool i am let's get going the malware, to... please quickly <laughs> yeah let's let's move on to that uh today we're going to talk about malware actually let's let's clarify this i'm a mac user uh sander how about you yourself uh not not truly i i have used a mac for work in the past and i actually loved it um, you know, obviously the, the hardware is brilliant and, and the, uh, the OS is, is I used to kind of have a trouble switching. And the last time I used, used OS X in, uh, in a, in a work environment, it was amazing. But at the moment I'm on a windows machine. Cool. Fair enough. And Peter, uh, I made the switch, uh, three years ago, I guess. Um, and, uh, um, although I have uh, a bunch of Windows VMs floating around, um, I am uh, solely uh, uh, an OS X zealot now, um, even so far as to have um, some devices of like of my own in the house, like the, not just a corporate device. So um, the, the iPad, I bought the iPad one. Um, I think I bought an iPad and a Surface Pro, the one, Surface Pro one the same year. Um, and... Wow. Um, that was my first device. That wasn't that was an i that was a Mac device. I didn't have an iPhone at the time, and it 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 was a slippery slope. Um, and um, I don't know. It uh, it it just seemed to be the you know once you're in the ecosystem, it's hard to get out. So, and I like yeah. the I like the Linux uh, you know the Linux kind of uh, feel for it. I, you know, I was I was a Unix guy back in the uh, early '80s. Uh, sorry, early '90s and late '80s um, uh, quite a bit and. Um, it's it feels comfortable for me to to be on a to be on a Linux interface. Uh, so yeah, it, that just makes sense. I think for for all power users when they when they moved OS X to to sort of run on a Unix base, that was that was like the 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 big change that really made it tenable for folks like you. You know. Yeah, yeah it was a, it's an easy switch. I mean, I I, I like it doesn't really doesn't really feel like I'm on uh, anything other than just a. A pretty fancy looking uh, Linux box to me, um, but the ecosystem's nice, and that's you know that's what's really kept me here. Yeah, and that was you know kind of um, pulling back to the show that I did with Lori McVitie, and and I've talked about this previously on some of my live streams with uh, Diraj Goel as well. When it comes to what the future of um, where people are headed with digital transformation, platform is kind of king. And platform and marketplaces and ecosystems and having um, the ability to kind of uh, exist inside of one of those, have your data permeate around those things so that you don't have to worry about having to learn different platforms um, is becoming, uh, becoming pretty important. Um, but having said all that, it's not all fun and games with Macs. 
Uh, today, we're going to talk about, the, the, or at least the context of today's show, is around malware on the Mac. And this is a great article. So um, if, uh, if our research team might be able to pop that up, I, I can pop this up onto the uh, banners as well. Here's a link to this. Objective C um, did an amazing job of illustrating, I, I'll call it illustrating, uh, the, the top malware of 2021 on Macs. Um, so worth checking out, worth reading through. He provides a great summary up top here and then a timeline and then actually dives into uh, the different pieces of malware and provides a ton of uh, data beyond that as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I want to you could definitely give a shout out to the, to, to the author of this because as I was reading it, 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 this is probably one of the most researched things I've ever not ever, but definitely in the recent past, um, have have come across. Like this is his his level of um, of explaining things, but also the nine links that he puts for other people's research. Like um, I read through this. I mean, in I don't know, forty five minutes, whatever it was. Um, but if you went through all those links, you could spend mm -hmm. two days and probably not get all of the information that's available off this. This is really. It was really well researched. Like, um, I like kudos, yeah. kudos to uh, it's Patrick. I think is the, the guy's name, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Patrick yeah. Wardle, awesome. Yeah. So, give him a follow. Anybody who's uh, checking this out here is presented at a uh, number of conferences here. Kensec West, though, out here in Vancouver. So that's uh, oh, cool. that's great to see. Um, so what uh, you know, first glance at this, my my take on this is there's some pretty bad malware i mean uh, you know i'm 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 stating some of the obvious here but you know even that first one that electro rat basically does everything and like everything bad everything possibly bad it loads into your machine um and and does all that and does the uh cryptocurrency um uh credential stealing uh as well um you guys have any first takes on this uh, i What's have a I have a, a, a very sort of um, high altitude take on, on the whole thing, which, which is that for the last month or so, I have been doing a lot of research into data breaches as part of this um, prep for a report that I'm publishing next month. And, uh, you know, we all know that ransomware really exploded last year. And so I was expecting more ransomware in 2021. Uh, and and ransomware did go up quite a bit compared with other attack vectors in 21. But what I what I actually what I found that surprised me was that there was a lot of malware that wasn't actually encrypting anything. It was just establishing persistence and exfiltrating data, and then and then that was it. So so it's not just a ransomware thing. It, it, malware in general has exploded. And I would say compared in terms of growth from the previous year, non ransomware malware has grown a lot more than regular ransomware. And so this, this sort of really put malware on, on my radar in a big way, but the nature of the data that I've been collecting means that all the details that Patrick put in this article, how does the malware get in? How is it establishing persistence? How is it exfiltrating? That's the detail that I didn't know. So it was it was really, really great and actually incredibly timely that you guys brought this to me because I was I was um, it, it filled in a couple of things for me. Now I want to go and, and do a bit of compare and contrast with how the, the, the Windows oriented malware is, is pursuing these same goals. But kind of to, to what you just said, it's like the, the capabilities in these things. So many of them are really, really variable. Right. So it's like key loggers, camera activation, persistent backdoors, stealthy exfil, like it, it really, really yeah. stuff. So just like you said, these are not, uh, well, with the, with the exception of Silver Sparrow, which we'll get to in a minute, these are like quite nasty. Hmm. Yeah, I, and, and the thing that, that resonated to, with me is, um, I, I, in my notes, I sort of wrote, you know, and using computer, you know, EUC is hard, right? Um, like endpoint computing um, and endpoint protection. There's so much going on, um, and what these tools are doing is are are are, are pretty crazy. The thing that I found very interesting was the um, was the infiltration. You know how you know what's their vector to get it on the machine, and um, it, there there seems to be a very you know a, a 
a couple of ways that they, that, that, you know, that is, you can fish um, and, and get a link on it. Um, you know, the Silver Sparrow one, you know, they don't even know how it was going. Like that was a, that was a very interesting um, piece of malware. Like this seems to be here, but we don't even know how it goes. It got here and we don't know what it's doing. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but the, the, but the one you have on the, on the screen right now, <laughs> the, 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 the uh, Xcode spy, that's just a case of, of, of compromising supply chain again, right? So they're they're getting code into the Xcode libraries um, and it's executing. And, and then this back door, this, this, this eggshell back door um, is now available uh, to anybody who delivers the, the code to, you know, who, who writes a piece of code and delivers it to somebody else. It, it's the, 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 the supply chain problems are, are endemic across all the, the, the systems we're seeing today. Um, and, it, and it's a great vector for um, for attackers to, you know, make use of other people delivering their their their, their own software. And they're just making, they're, you know, they're just, hey, I'm going to put it in here. And and this this is all Mac OS stuff, um, but it's 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 applicable to you know your browser and you know man man in the man in the man in the browser attacks. And um, it just really, you know, it it's it's crazy how how um, how this is happening and how this is exploding. Um, and these are, like you said, Sandra, these are there's some crazy bad um, attacks in here. These 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 Trojans, these these rats are really 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 bad. And one they even think might be a nation state actor level um, mm -hmm. because of the, the the level of complexity in it. Um, and what they're trying to do, they're stealing they're stealing credentials. They're stealing your crypto wallet. Um, you know all things that are happening um, and in the news today, right? It's. I mean, I gotta say that the irony of of Xcode projects becoming a vector in an Apple ecosystem when Apple had a closed ecosystem for so long, and it had both advantages and disadvantages, right? And it's like they they sort of have at least kind of at the um, at the the technical level kind of opened this thing up more, and now you we are sort of pulling down projects from other things the way you would in a Linux environment and yep. increasingly the way we do in Windows and you get the same exact vectors showing up too. So I, it's uh, I, not for me to say whether that was a good or a bad cough on Apple's part, but it's it's interesting to see just how fast these sorts of things pop up when they make the same kind of strategic moves. And and it, and even the, the, you know, the first party, second party, 18th party issue comes up, right? So um, you don't know who, what library somebody else is calling. So you might call somebody else's library and they call another library and they call another library. And, you know, suddenly you've got 14 libraries you're pulling in and you need to vet all of those. And we all think that everybody else is doing better security and better, you know, you know hey, I'm going to use their code because they're obviously doing more than I am. Now they're, they're probably doing the same as you, maybe less than you, um, maybe a touch more in certain areas. Like it, it, we're, you know, we end up building something on a house of sand, or a, you know, or, or building a house on sand, um, you know, and and uh, and and you, you just don't know what you're going to get. So, so um, put yourself. Forget libraries. <laughs> 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 uh, our, so our research team in the back here put out this question here. Who's got Max? Would love to hear, you know, I'd love to hear if the split is kind of what I had described uh, at first as well. I'm starting to see at least at a five, like getting close to 50%, I would think, uh, of, uh, of Max out there. Um, Sebastian Maniak, another one of our uh, Dev Central MVPs, noticed it, uh, notes Toronto using boy. a Mac from <laughs> Toronto, Canadian, yes. Uh, using a Mac and Windows 11 desktop, waiting for an M1 Pro. So this is interesting too, right? Like the Silver Sparrow uh, compiled to natively execute on Apple Silicon M1 ARM64. You gotta imagine, I haven't looked at it. Maybe one of you guys have at this point, but the amount of ARM-based malware that's out there probably hitting IoT devices uh, and now Apple Silicon as well, I think. You know, other like on the PC side, they're looking at SOCs uh, as well, or, or moving towards SOCs as well. Um, any any thoughts on that, or any insight on uh, the amount of ARM-based malware out there? There's lots of it, and it's horrible. Um, uh, I, I was I was talking with somebody else uh, about some 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 uh, you know attacks that could go on in a you know DDoS vectors and. Um, we were sort of coming up with numbers and, you know, I said, I, I think I have an old fridge that could, could do, you know, those kind of attacks because 
they're the 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 problem with uh, you know if we look at other silicon, um, if you look at uh, the, the, a lot of those devices, a lot of those IoT devices are never updated, um, and and they're just you know. I, I know I was guilty a couple of years ago where I wasn't even updating my, you know, my u ubiquity boxes, right? So I, I wasn't even really monitoring it. It was sort of, you know, off onto the side. It was my 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 server network. I wasn't really using it much. And I looked at it one time and I realized I hadn't even updated it in like 18 months. Um, I'm a security guy, <laughs> you know, and it, it's literally a checkbox to do that. Um, so I don't blame other people to, you know, who don't go and say, oh, what's the, what's the, uh, the, the version of code that's running on my fridge, you know, is it, is it the latest and greatest? I, 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 you know, who knows, right? So um, yeah. there is a lot of, there's a lot of malware out there. Um, and um, it, it's, it's, it's made use of a lot of time. And Sander, I know uh, F5 Labs has spent a lot of time uh, over the years looking at, um, you know, the, the thing bots and, and the, the, the horrible world that they, they, they exist in, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually been a few years since we've had any, any sort of concrete, I, I think it's been two years since we've done an IOT series, but um, I don't think that that threat has gotten any less in the meantime. I think that the, the sort of proliferation of, of pretty low fi simple IOT stuff and, and um, actually one of our, our colleagues, Joe Martin has, has sort of said to me as an aside that he thinks the, the sort of, the growth of 5G is going to sort of take the IoT DDoS threat and make it much, much worse. So, yep. so we, so our hypothesis is uh, we're going to be hearing more about IoT and and uh, ThingBots in the next 18 months or so, and it's gonna, it's going to um, probably cause a lot of upset when when we hear about it. Everyone's going to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple uh, comments here that let me. Bring these up but actually a number of folks uh using mac uh josh another mvp uh, up in ottawa i believe actually so thanks for chiming mm -hmm. in and thanks for your contributions and congrats on uh, mvp uh damien as well also uses a mac uh but no it's no malware so far i haven't seen anything we've got protection on our machines here at f5 i haven't seen anything so far daniel wolf um windows 10 and xubuntu uh, as well. Nice work. Pretty awesome. Um, yeah, good cross section of usage out there. That was kind of, um, uh, you know, if you count Sebastian using both, we're kind of more Mac than not as far as uh, viewers uh, go here. And then between between us as well, there's two of us on with Max right now, and, and Sander, you're on a PC. So actually, more Max than we can think of. Um, yeah, so um, interesting thoughts on that. We've got about two minutes left. Any any final words? Maybe uh, maybe I'll give you a final word, uh, Chef, on on your thoughts on Mac malware and and uh, state of things. Well, I think I think the state of things is um, uh, corporations, um, you know, or enterprises and and people in general are are going to be working remotely for the foreseeable future. I don't I don't see us going back even. Um, if this pandemic turns into an endemic, I think that's the the, the, the new word of the week, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the the remote work is going to be around, and people are going to be using you know their own devices or corporately you know managed devices, um, and um, that's that's not going to change. And I think end end user computing is going to continue to be um, very important, um, an important protection place for enterprises. Um, and you know we're 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 at F5. You know normally we're application stack, um, but we do have a lot of remote access uh, customers. But a lot of customers are using EPM, um, and um, you know that that market is growing for us, and we're continuing to invest in that. And I think it's going to be interesting to see where where we take it over the next uh, you know eighteen months, um, and um, and where the market continues to go with you know things like CASB and and SASE and and the the different technologies that people are looking at. To to protect the data and the applications, um, and um, it's 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 not gonna it's not gonna shrink. I think it's just gonna it's gonna grow. And you know maybe in twenty twenty three January we're looking back at um, you know something new happening too. So, mm -hmm. and thanks again for in person by then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both of you. 
Um, cool. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Chef. Um, we were we're always glad to see you, and it's been great chatting with you. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. All right. Fun stuff there, Sander. Um, we got a couple minutes left here, so we're just going to run through any of the comments that we may have missed. Uh, Josh, sorry, I missed your city there. It's actually a uh, Windsor uh, that you're in. So hello over over there, just above uh, just above Chef. Um, let's see what else we got here. Sebastian, uh, this was a comment on Peter's picture here. Uh, we can bring that back up here. And uh, yeah, great picture, new profile picture for sure. I think Peter did use that as his profile picture. <laughs> uh, for a little bit if i'm not mistaken so um there's that and we got uh damien here from upstate new york so almost canada actually so this is awesome uh being able to connect uh, uh connect with you all and that's all the comments that we have here so yeah great show today uh sander thank you very much for jumping in the co-host seat today um for yourself you've, you're working on a couple of things maybe you can take a second to uh, give us a bit of a teaser on things that are upcoming from f5 labs oh yeah absolutely um <clears throat> i am uh the the project lead on the application protection report and we are in the final weeks of sort of finalizing all our research and uh putting words to paper and it is it's an interesting one i got a i'm going to be totally transparent here i had a hypothesis last year in may about what the next year's set of breaches were going to look like. And uh, I was a little bit surprised. Not not everything that I predicted came true. Uh, and, and specifically, what I thought was that we were seeing this explosion of ransomware because the, the demand for stolen data for the purposes of fraud uh, was, was starting to dry up. And so people were turning to ransoming data instead of using it for fraud. And so if that had been true, we would have seen more ransomware and less of this kind of malware for the purposes of exfiltration, less other forms of, of data theft for the purposes of fraud. Uh, and, and that's not really what we're seeing. And so now I'm, I'm uh, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be trying to kind of puzzle out the relationship between the ransomware monetization form and the fraud monetization form. So all that's going to be discussed in the APR. We're pretty excited about it. Uh, we use the attack, the MITRE attack framework that we used last year to analyze all the breaches. So, um, so it, it's something to, to look forward to. We are publishing that on February 15th, the, the same day as Agility starts. Um, so, uh, and I will also be doing a, a recorded presentation at Agility, sharing some of those findings. So uh, if, if there's anybody there that's sort of looking forward to seeing what we've learned in the, in the project, you can either catch us at Agility or uh, see the report at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, I always look forward to those. You guys have a lot of great data and it's just, it's not vendor biased. It's not really talking, it's not talking about products, F5 right. products or, or products whatsoever. So it's it's great data to be able to sift through. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's kind of the the big thing right now is we're sort of all hands on deck getting that thing done. And uh, and then after that, it's gonna be a little bit of downtime, a little bit of, of speaking for me in the spring. And then there are a few questions that we've had about sort of the nature of of risk over time when it comes to web vulnerabilities and we're going to see if we can cook up some some novel techniques to sort of quantify that so that's going to be a little bit more experimental and if if it works out that'll uh probably launch in in late spring early summer nice yeah very cool all right well thank you for joining me sander i'm gonna go ahead and and pull you off and go through the last little bit here but thank you very much for joining me today my pleasure take care boo cheers Alrighty, so um, just last uh, little bit here. Uh, I did put the link for the Objective C article into the chat, so folks can uh, check that out. Uh, tons of great info in there. Like like uh, Peter was saying, it's you know maybe forty five minutes to just go through that article, and then all the links inside of that article uh, goes really deep as well. So tons of great info in there. A uh, couple last words for you all. Upcoming shows again. Um, the core with Jason Rom uh, next Tuesday is going to have on Jim McCarron. They're going to talk about the R series hardware. This one is particularly important if you're an F5 big IP customer and you're on an I series or older at this point. Uh, depending on when you purchased it during the life cycle, you may be looking at uh, newer hardware at this point, but you want that hardware to be future proofed and you want it to adopt 
kind of the latest um, architectures, if you will, um, that discussion will be important because um, that architecture is incorporated into the Arthur series platform. Uh, so that'll be a good one to check out and get all the details on that. Um, on the on the next Thursday, Dev Central Connects, we'll have on Laura Alonzo, who's going to be talking through real automation stories. Um, again, she is she's a a bright young girl. Um, I shouldn't say girl, bright young woman, and she has uh, taken her uh, automation to the next level at her organization. As, and she's going to talk through for those of you who ha haven't gone through this automation journey yet. She's going to talk through. You know uh, what she what resources she used to get through that um i'm looking forward to that conversation uh top five we'll have on uh as well uh and go through um all of the best and uh, greatest articles that we have available and then we have uh, at the end of the month we have uh wagnonicon as well for for folks who are fans of uh fans of john wagnon already so with that being said, if you enjoy this content, hit like, uh, hit subscribe. If you're on the YouTube, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and on LinkedIn as well. You can check out that content there. Otherwise, I'm going to leave you with Jason Rahm to talk about next Tuesday's show. We'll see you next time, folks. Hey there, community. You caught me in the middle of a move. Jason Rahm here and what used to be, you know, my backdrop. I had a big airplane back there. You know, my um, steampunk lamp is is all out of place and my paintings are gone and, you know, do a quick run around and, you know, all this is coming down in a matter of minutes. So uh, I'm moving and so my new house uh, will have my new office, which is going to be a little smaller than this place. So we'll see how that works out. But anyway, my next episode of The Core, Tuesday, January 18th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, I will have global solutions architect Jim McCarron joining me and we're going to talk about hardware the R series platform and you know in the software first world what place does hardware have well you know I mean newsflash even though everything's software first it's got to run somewhere and so you know we're going to talk about why why hardware why purpose built hardware and you know what uh, you know what R series brings to the table so join me January 18th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific for my next episode of The Core.